It's just 26 feet. 26 feet of water representing not only some of the best fishing anywhere, but for Bob gotcha. Angelo, his future as a fishing guide. The first part of my trip every day is a trip to the dam to catch bait. And the type of bait that we use, you can't buy. There's bait stores don't keep it. Bob is just one of thousands of anglers up and down the Cumberland River whose passion for fishing. Yes, this is some of the greatest fishing in the world. And very livelihood are being threatened by the U.S. Corps of Engineers. When clients come from out of town to fish, an important part of the trip is to make sure we have good, high quality bait and the oxygenated water and the current that's, that the dams provide make sure that it's a high quality bait. Citing safety concerns, the Corps plans to restrict fishing in boats below its dams on the Cumberland during periods of water release and lock operations. The size of the restricted areas differ by dam, ranging from 600 feet at Percy Priest to over 1,000 feet at Cheatham. Most of those would be in an area that's deep prime fishing area for that particular body of water. And when you get below downstream of that area, most of the fishing that you're looking for really tapers off quickly. We were blindsided, so to speak, and there was never any indication that this was going to happen until we were just told this is the way it's going to be. And uh, yeah, we would love to have had an opportunity to been in on this before the decision was made. It ought to be embarrassing to the Corps, but it's infuriating to sportsmen. There are times when there's a little bit of turbulence down there, but nothing that is difficult to navigate. When they're spilling over the gates, you don't need to go, especially if it's spilling real hard, but if they're just running their turbines or generators and you just pay a little bit of attention, they're not dangerous at all. The Corps maintains that boils and currents created by water spilling have left three people dead, one seriously injured, and 10 requiring rescue since 2009. But anglers counter that most, if not all, of the eight boat-related fatalities since 1979 were the result of no life jackets or improper use of them, that many thousands of boat trips and man hours are safely spent next to dams. For the life of me, me and other anglers do not understand why the top brass in the Corps of Engineers is willing to risk the credibility that they have here uh, because this commander has come in here and tried to change our lifestyle. Uh, public safety is the highest priority of the Corps, so uh, we don't want to jeopardize that. And the federal the Corps of Engineers commander for the Nashville District is Lieutenant Colonel James DeLapp. Interested one. anglers and news crews arrived early for a public meeting on the tailwaters decision with emotions running high. We very rarely get an honest response from the people that we ask the questions of. From the beginning, those attending were upset, not only about the Corps' action, but the lack of input leading up to it. People are entirely fed up. There are stupid people born every day, and I'll, I, I would submit to you, sir, that the population is growing. <laughs> so, naturally, there are going to be more stupid people. You know, we can't, those of us that are law-abiding and careful, why punish us for the activities of the stupid? They were all in a sp uh, spilling situation where that boat should not have been where the water was spilling. We're not idiots. We go down there when the water is safe. We know what we're doing. We like to catch fish. We like to provide money for the local economy. And this is going to stop. The reason the passion is coming out here tonight is not just because people are just recreationally fishing and love it. They do. But there are people that make a substantial part of their living taking people fishing below these, these dams, in these specific areas. The conditions-based policy we had in place uh, was not providing the level of safety that we thought, that we thought it needed to, number one. Number two, we, we figured out that we weren't really fully following the policy that had been in place since 1996 um, that was executed. It's a nationwide policy. It's a policy that allows bank fishing near dams but not boat fishing within a regulated area. It is important, we do understand it. We know it's, we understand that it's not popular, especially with the group here tonight. Um, but the Corps has an obligation, federal government, state and local governments have an obligation for the entire general public to, to maintain safety of all the projects. It would be a much less cost to them in terms of putting those symbols and those signs and sirens and horns in place than to implement a $2.6 million barrier restriction. So give us a chance to do that. If that doesn't work, then let's, let's all get back together and see what we can do. But at least give us a chance to go forward and try that first. 
That might happen thanks to legislation introduced by Senator Lamar Alexander, who has his own colorful take on the tailwaters situation, calling the Corps' decision unreasonable and unnecessary. And to restrict fishing below the dams 100% of the time, even though the water spills through the dams only 20% of the time, would be like keeping the gate down over a railway crossing 100% of the time. The track's not dangerous if the train's not coming. And this water's not dangerous if the water's not spilling. We're in a budget crunch. We're supposed to be out of money in Washington. And I'd like to know where the $2.6 million is coming from that ought to be used for recreation facilities and other core projects to put these physical bar barriers in. All of which means an uncertain future for anglers like Bob Angelo. If you put someone in charge of this fishery who's not a fisherman, he, there is no way you can explain to him and make him understand what this is. That's the danger of ordering, ordering people around. We don't need a bureaucrat to tell us it's unsafe. I'm Alan Griggs on Tennessee's Wild Side. <laughs>